welcome to day three of the snapback. I'm really pumped. I'm already feeling a little bit better. When I was first starting, like, oh, when I was doing my long tones during the day, like my face just was so tired. I have like practically zero range, but we're gonna get better. So I'm very excited about today. So we are gonna do another etude from the Franz Strauss natural horn etudes, except I'm going to cheat <laughs> because I'm not gonna do this on the natural horn because there's accidentals and I haven't taken the time to learn the natural horn that well. So maybe that's something I should do later, but as of right now, for my purposes, I'm just gonna actually use all the fingering. <laughs> um, the thing that we're focusing on today is a really, really steady airstream. Um, as you can tell, this is all um, long tones essentially with a crescendo and a decrescendo um, and with skips, little leaps. So that's what's going to be the challenge. And I'm also going to do this a little bit differently. So I'm going to do a little Caruso method -y thing here where I um, am going to use a breath attack for the first note, but I'm actually going to alternate. So for the first note, I'm going to use a breath attack. Then the second note, or the second time, I'm going to articulate, right? And then I'm going to switch back to breath attack and then articulate. So that's going to switch it up a little for me. And the whole thing about breath attacking is to really center the pitch and get your airstream going right at the speed that you want it to and not relying so heavily on the tongue to get that note started. Um, breath attacks are really, really good for that specific thing, for accuracy and for getting the airstream going. They are not necessarily great for articulation and tonguing um, because they're just kind of two separate things. Everything's got to work in tandem. So just working on the air aspect isn't necessarily going to fix the tongue aspect, but they do have to work together. So <laughs> my dog is eating a skimmer basket for my pool. It's a hot mess. She's a disaster. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Very distracting. All right, so I'm also gonna do a little bit of Caruso method here where internally I am thinking the subdivision. So da, 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 play, okay? And also thinking the subdivision for when I'm going to breathe. So on those uh, dotted half notes, da, 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 rest. That wasn't right. That wasn't the right rhythm, but you know what I mean, <laughs> okay? Also, my dog is so distracting. Now she took, literally, she just took a wick from one of those little tiki torches, and she's about to tear it up. Disaster. <laughs> okay. All right. So, I'm going to start. Ready? Inside my bell, I might tap or I might tap my foot to keep that really rock steady rhythm. Okay. So, 
I tried something a little different there. I tried just breathing in through the nose to try and keep that that set that I already had um, for that high G, which I was kind of switching in and out of doing that. So um, sometimes what can be really, really helpful is um, when you do have to breathe in between a high note and another high note, you can breathe in through the nose and it can keep the set there. Um, and that can is usually quite effective. What didn't work for me in this case was that I actually had to breath attack that G and it just didn't really quite happen the way that I wanted it to. So I'm gonna start on that E again, um, the two measures before it, and try that again. I'm gonna try breathing in through the nose so that I am set for that G and I'm gonna use a little bit faster air because I am breath attacking. All right, and my tongue isn't helping at all. So I really need to be spot on. So once again, my breath attacks are failing me a little bit in this upper register. So that is something that I really need to work on. So when I use my tongue, I'm relying a little bit too heavily on the tongue to get the correct airspeed. And I don't want that. I want the airspeed to be correct because of the air that I'm putting into the instrument. So I'm going to start on that F again. Oh. Excuse me, my ears were not correct. One. my face because I am still really really out of shape and I can kind of feel the muscles in my face like very tired um but in a good way like very happy nothing hurts everything feels super relaxed it's like going to the gym it just feels good after but you definitely can tell that you've used your muscles um so for me what I have to work on a lot is in that upper register, it's not quite solid yet um, because I'm still really out of shape. Um, the more that I do this kind of stuff, it's going to get so much easier and I cannot wait. And just steadying out my sound a little bit, I can hear a little bit of shaking and that's just instability in the muscles. It's, it, that's really all that is. Um, the other thing too, I can tell that my precision timing isn't quite exactly right. I have a tendency to slow down a lot. Um, it's part of my personality. I like to take things super slow and 
easy going um, but I kind of need to light a fire under my butt a little bit <laughs> um, so that would be another thing that I need to work on the third thing that I need to work on is my descending intervals I'm having a really hard time hearing them it is a lot easier for me to hear going up than it is to hear going down why I'm not sure but I need to work on it so I hope that this helps you out I give this a try this is a really good one it kind of feels good it's a little hard but like it gets the air moving and now I kind of feel like I can after a little bit of a break I can tackle anything I'm kind of excited <laughs> all right see you next time